Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to the Z's seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations of a psychological, mental health, emotional health paradigm, coaching paradigm as well. We do that as often as we can, usually several times per week. Um, and so, as we look at that, if you're looking for coaching, life, business, relationship, any point in between, would love to be of assistance to you in that way. Please feel free to reach out at PO Perception on Twitter or in the About Me section of this channel. We can make something happen from there. Um, signs of toxic family is the first kind of thing we're looking at here. Toxic family can be really difficult because obviously if you're related to them, you obviously feel some level of uh, responsibility to continue a relationship even if it's not in your best interest. First thing is they have no interest in really being invested in you as a person unless they directly benefit. So the lack of interest can become extremely difficult because you're trying to keep the relationship going because society standards say that you should, but at the same time, if they're not being honest or forthright with their intentions and or they're using your emotions or the leverage of the relationship to their advantage, then you honestly get quite burnt out with them rather quickly. The next thing there is to kind of look at it from the perspective of um, kind of... Uh, they don't make the time to make the relationship going and keep going. So they may reach out to you to try and draw you in, but when it comes down to actually keeping plans or make time for phone calls, text messages, um, FaceTime calls, or in-person meetups, they'll always have something else they have going on. Um, and so, but then when you're not available for them, they'll turn it around on you and make it sound like you're a negative person or you're not in their best in their best interest and so that becomes problematic in the sense that you're guilted into into staying connected uh with them in a long run there um the next thing is to kind of look at it from the um they are super critical they're they're always looking for you to do better. They're always looking for you to do something more meaningful for their own benefit. And at the end of the day, um, it can be, it can be challenging and it can be pretty difficult to make something happen in a kind of a better way, uh, and kind of going in a direction that uh, if they're constantly critical, you're either going to change their, your behavior or pull away from the relationship when it doesn't suit you or when you're feeling really, really hurt or really feeling like, you know, you've been taken for granted or perhaps emotionally manipulated or abused in a situation. The next thing there is to kind of look at it from a, um, you know, they w refuse to apologize and they are judgmental of your actions. And so refusing to apologize is a sign of a power flex to the degree that they are kind of looking for you to be the one to apologize to them or make them feel like they're the ones that need to be revered. They're the ones that constantly need to be respected. Obviously, respect is to be a two-way street pi primarily, but many people have difficulties in maintaining and connecting the idea of keeping relationships mutually beneficial. And the next is by refusing to apologize, they also will never show any sign of weakness, which ultimately means that any bit of weakness that exists in the relationship will eventually be blamed upon the person who is being victimized and thereby gaslighting them into feeling kind of out of balance and or out of uh, connective. And ultimately, it becomes extremely challenging when we want to maintain relationships because this is a family situation, but we don't necessarily feel like we can do that on a continual basis or in a manner that is going to be both mutually beneficial and emotionally healthy for both parties in the situation. Many times, a person who is uh, introverted is more likely to suffer in these situations because standing up for oneself doesn't come naturally to an introvert many times and thus there are challenges in that as well so hopefully this is helpful
keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.